Hi everyone. I hope you're doing good. This week we will be talking about lessons 97 to 100. So let's get started. You are going to need your lessons manual, the student worksheet book, the math card games manual with the game cards, the geared clock. You will need one set of your hour cards and minute cards, one of the colors. You will need appendix page 10, which is the clock. You will need a brad. You will need your four in one ruler and you will need two or four sheets of construction paper. Now the brad and the construction paper are not included in the Right Start Math materials. This week, your child will be learning more about time. They will also have a lesson working on perimeter. So let's get started by turning to lesson 97. For this lesson, you will need one set of the hour and minute cards and appendix page 10, which looks like this. And if you did not purchase the uh, appendix pages separate or didn't come in, in your kit, you can also find those appendix pages in the back of the lesson manual. Now the warm up is going to have you use the geared clock and put various times on it for your child to say those times back. Look at the section called telling time on a clock. In this section, you're going to give your child the uh, minute and hour cards, and then you're going to set the, the geared clock just as you've done before um, with the times as shown in the lesson manual. Then your child is going to compose the time using the hour and minute cards. Now take a look at this section called telling time to the minute. In this section, your child is going to explore and examine what the hour hand does as the minute hand moves. Now at the top of the second page of the lesson, your child is going to be reviewing the geared clock and the minute markings. And then you will give them some practice by setting the, the clock on various times as listed at the top of the second page of the lesson. Now for these times, you will notice that the minute hand, the minute hand is not going to necessarily be on a multiple of five and therefore not pointing on a number that's listed on the clock, but instead pointing to one of those minute lines. For the section called Name That Game, you're going to use appendix page 10. And you're going to start by assembling the clock. So you're going to cut out the clock like this. And then you're also going to cut out the hands of the clock. And then I always put a starter hole in all of these in the, in the clock, in the center of the clock, and also a hole in the minute hands at the base so that I could slide a brad through there. I don't know if you can see that, I have a brad in there. And then I would just slide that into my clock. And they are going to use this clock for that game. Now, if you do not have a brad, you can try a pipe cleaner. If you use a pipe cleaner, you'll need to have these minute hands and hour hands. You'll need to make the base wider. Um, to make it work. And then also you'll need to poke the holes in advance of the hour hand and minute hand so the pipe cleaner will um, go through because the pipe cleaner itself is not strong enough to break through that paper. Once you have that clock assembled, your child will play the game called Name That Time. Now there is not a blog for this game, but it is a quick game and it is easy to play. Then you're going to give your child worksheet 77 to complete. Now this is a matching worksheet where your child is going to match the times as shown on the clock faces and match those to the digital times that are listed in the middle of the worksheet. Now, if your child is still learning their multiplication math facts or uh, you're working on some strength or speed, definitely add a multiplication math card game at the end of this lesson. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 98. Now, if you have uh, worksheets that were printed before or during 2016, there is a change in our listed on our website for worksheet 78. So you're gonna to wanna to make those changes before starting this lesson. You will again need to use appendix 10 for this lesson. Now the warm up section is going to actually be asking questions about telling time and about the clock in general. You will start this lesson by playing the game around the clock. Now there is not a, a blog for this game, um, but if you prefer to play a different game, you can choose to play the game called 15 minutes later. And we do have a blog for that one that's combined with another card game. And it is called summer game number eight, hour and 
hour and minute memory and 15 minutes later. And you will play the section called 15 minutes later. Once you complete the game around the clock, you're going to give your child worksheet 78. Now worksheet 78 is a lot of fun to do. It looks like this. And uh, you're going to start, your child's going to start at this top clock and then follow the directions that's listed underneath it. So the top clock says find 10 minutes later. Well, they've already done one for you. So you're going to draw a line from this clock to this clock. And then you're going to follow the directions for this clock, which says find 30 minutes later. So they're going to find the clock that is 30 minutes after this time. Now, if they get all of those questions correctly, they're going to create a star that sh that's shown at the top of the second page of the lesson. Now, a helpful hint as your child is um, completing this uh, worksheet, the answer, the star shows up best if they draw the line from the center of the clock to the center of the clock. Now, my kids I have a couple lazy learners and a couple a little, little lazy ones, so they would actually do... Uh, not in the center, so the star didn't show up as well. So have your child uh, draw the line from one center of the clock to the next center of the clock. Again, if your child is still learning their multiplication facts, um, go ahead and play a math card game at the end of this lesson. Well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 99. Now, if you have a lesson manual that was written in 2016 or printed in 2016 or before, there is a correction for this lesson. So make sure you make the necessary, necessary changes before you uh, walk through this lesson. The warm up for this lesson is going to be the top part of worksheet 79. Look at the section called Observing the Hour Hand. In this section, you're going to be asking questions about the hour hand and its movement around the clock. Then you're going to give your, your child worksheet 79 and have them complete the middle part of that worksheet. You're going to have them draw their hands, the minute hand and the hour hand that shows the time that's being requested. Now, the trick to get these answers right is that the hour hand also needs to be showing the movement. For example, in that first one, um, 1235, the child should show that the hour hand is pointing about halfway between the 12 and the one. Um, not right at the 12 and not at the one, but halfway in between. If not, they, your child needs to go back and make those changes. They can look at the geared clock if needed. Look at the section called problem one. Now you're going to be working through a lot of these problems together during the lesson time. Start by having your child read through the first problem. Now remember to have your child read through those problems several times before they even attempt to start solving. Then you can have your child start solving the problem, but you don't, you want to try to have them do it without your assistance. Once they have finished their, um, solving their problem, have them discuss the answers with you. Now, the trick to these problems, just so you know, if your child struggles or um, they're going through it, but they're doing it in a very time consuming way, the trick is your child needs to first calculate the in between minutes. So if you look at the problem uh, one, it says Isabel needs to be ready for lesson at 430. She needs five minutes for a snack, 10 minutes to change her clothes and 15 minutes to walk there. Those middle times, those intermediate times are five minutes for a snack, 10 minutes to change her clothes and 15 minutes to work, walk there. So what is five plus 10 plus 15? 30. So you're going to have, ask your child, uh, your child is going to calculate that. Now it's easy then if, if they have to be somewhere at 430, how much sooner do they need to be ready to get ready, uh, how much sooner do they need to start getting ready? 30 minutes. So what is 30 minutes earlier than 4.30, which is four o'clock. Now, once your child solves the problem, ask the question, does it make sense? All right, well, take a look at problem two. Again, have your child read through the problem several times, um, Ask, have them solve it, then ask questions. Does your answer make sense? Now, if their answer is incorrect, have them discuss how they solve the problem and then make the necessary changes as you go so that they can get the, the problem correct. Continue that same process through problems three and four, talking through their answers as always, asking the question, does your answer make sense? Go over any errors they made and help them to think through those problems.
For problem four, have your child solve the problem first on their own and then ask how they solve the problem. Now, if your child solved it in a more complicated way, then you can help them learn to think of it through an easier method. So basically the problem is this, Abby leaves at 7.45 to go fishing. She arrives home at two o'clock. How long was she gone? Let them know that it's easier to count from the whole hour, right? So they take that 7.45, go to that first hour. They add 15 minutes to get to eight o'clock. Then calculating from eight to two is much easier, right? That's six full hours. Now they add that 15 minutes back in and they're left with six hours and 15 minutes. Now the suggested math card game for this lesson is either 15 minutes later or 30 minutes later. You will also want to add a multiplication math card game if your child is still working on those. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 100. Now, first of all, congratulations. You have completed or almost have completed 100 lessons. You may want to find a way to celebrate this with your child after you complete lesson 100. Now, if your lesson manual was printed in 2021 or before, there is a correction listed for this lesson. Now, because this is not yet on the website, or at least at the time of this recording, let me tell you what this correction is. If you look at the very bottom of the second page of the lesson, um, under the explanations, your child is going to be playing the short chain solitaire game. And the reference number that they list is C23, but it's really A47. Now for this lesson, your child is going to need the four in one ruler and either two or four pieces of construction paper, which is not included in your lesson, in your Right Start Math materials. Now the warm up is having your child complete the top part of worksheet 80. Take a look at the section called reviewing a foot. Now in this section, you are going to ask questions to your child to explore the four in one ruler. And you will also explain to your child that a foot is 12 inches, which is this side here, 12 inches. You are then going to ask them if one foot is 12 inches, then how many inches is two feet or how many inches is a half of a foot? Let your child think through these um, problems without giving any assistance if possible. Now take a look at the bottom of the first page of the lesson under the section called perimeter in feet and inches. It is in this section that you're going to be using the construction paper. Now I found it easy, easier anyway, that when I had my construction paper and two pieces um, that I actually would tape them together to hold them together. That way the papers didn't slide and flip and flop. Now take a look at the bottom of the first page of the lesson. You're going to tape them in two different places. Now this one I've taped on the long side and this one I've taped on the short side, on the short side of the paper. So I've taped them together. So this one's whiter and this one is a little taller. Now at the top of the second page of the lesson, you're going to give your, ch your child the um, taped or the construction paper. Now problem one is going to have your child measure and then calculate the perimeter for both pieces sets of construction paper. Now make sure that as your child is measuring that they start at the zero. So here, if we're measuring the top part, make sure we line up that zero to the edge of this paper, not starting at the edge of the ruler, because that will alter the, me the correct measurement. They will not get the correct measurement. Also, something to note, not all construction paper um, has the exact same measurements. I have, uh, I got different type of construction paper. So my answers were different from the ones that were in the lesson manual. So if your uh, measurements turn out a little bit different, that's fine. Just calculate, make sure your child is calculating the correct answers. Now for problem two, your child is going to measure either the height of a friend or the height of a sibling. Now we personally, we had our child stand up against the wall. We marked a little tick mark on the wall uh, in pencil so it could be erased later. And then they would measure all the way up to that tick mark. Um, if you're not comfortable with writing on a wall, you can have your child lay down and then measure that way. Now for problem three, your child is going to measure and calculate the perimeter of the large rectangle on the top of worksheet 80. And that is this rectangle here. 
that one there. And then problem four is going to calculate the hexagon. They show you a picture of the hexagon down here. Where a hexagon, one side of the regular hexagon is four and one half inches. Now remember, a regular polygon has equal sides. So if one side of this hexagon is four and a half inches, all of the other sides are also four and a half inches. Now, the suggested math card game for this lesson is Short Chain Solitaire, and we do have a blog for that one. It's called Winter Games Short Chain Solitaire. Again, if your child is still learning or working on their multiplication math facts, pick a game to keep working on those or get those solidified. Well, that's it for the week. If you have any questions or concerns about a lesson, or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We're here to help. I look forward to seeing you next week as we cover lessons 101 to 104. Have a great week, everybody.